Welcome to the H series of webinars. This series is aimed at new and aspiring sheep producers to give them a step up into the Queensland sheep industry. This housing webinar is part six of the series and explores the basics of shearing facilities. This webinar was delivered by shearing contractor Raylene Bowden Sheedy on the 13th of August 2020. This is clip two of four and covers preparation for shearing. As we all know, things can get quite hectic before shearing commences. Sometimes things get overlooked because everyone's running around and they're, they're sort of like, oh, you know what, well, we forgot to do that. Oh, we've got to do that. Um, so I've made a bit of a checklist for growers to ensure they are prepared for the basic everyday production of shearing um, in all aspects. So adequate wool packs, bale fasteners and branding, in, example, one shots, which Go without saying, very important to have these, of course. Shearing shed stationery, telebook, wool book, classes, specification. In my experience, a lot of times, starting a shed without these can prove difficult. And, you know, you're sort of scratching to use a piece of paper or something like that to, to get you started, which isn't really ideal. Speaking to your shearing contractor and wool broker about a shearing advance, if it's needed, really great to get the ball rolling before commencement of shearing as it can take a few days to process and your contractor may need payment when shearing is completed straight away to pay their staff. Backlining chemical and equipment organised and tested as there's nothing worse when you start backlining and somehow the gun has decided it's not going to work for some reason, which I have seen a lot, which then ultimately puts you behind in other jobs such as drafting and mustering, which is very important to either fix it or wait for a replacement. I think sufficient amount of rubbish bins, empty and provided at all exits from your shearing shed and quarters, without saying very important. You don't really like to see rubbish flying around the flat or contaminated in the wool shed. Fridges in the shearing shed and quarters are turned on the day prior to shearing, cooled down and ready for use, especially on those hot summer days when you get to the shed and the quarters um, fridges aren't turned on and the, the shed one's not turned on it they take a little while to cool down and you're sort of putting fresh food in there with, with um, when they're hot. Taking over all your shearing gear around a week out, engage gear if anything needs replacing. You have time to source those parts from town or let your contractor know to bring specific parts when they come. Sure all the gates, latches, hinges are all fixed and are in working order. Once again a problem that could take you away from doing what you need to do during shearing and puts you behind in your own work. Ensure any hazardous areas have been blocked off and the shearing contractor has been made aware of these areas and they can make their staff aware of them also just to prevent incidences and accidents. Checking the toilet showers are in working condition and are clean as when not used for a while. Now this story may sound familiar. The first person flushed the toilet and the back rubber is worn from the heat and being exposed to the elements come flying comes flying off and water all over the place. Never a good start to shearing. Hot water system, either electrical or gas, is ready to go and working. Ensuring you have ample gas for your stoves. Test stoves are in working order. Avoid that dreaded phone call from the shearing contractor saying, oh, there isn't any gas to light the stove. Always have a few spare parts, long guts, cogs, spindles, etc., for any possible breakdown that may, may occur that could hinder the day's production and ultimately cost the grower more money. Sure wool press is running correctly and the scales are weighing correctly. Let the wool presser know if they're weighing a little incorrect so there is no bale weight discrepancies and no overweight bales that could ultimately cost, cost the grower money. Cleaning out the shearing shed and quarters for any contamination, I find, find most effectively using a blower, yeah, which is very important. Adequate beds and mattresses to accommodate all staff members, I think, is also a good point. When your staff can get a really good sleep, production levels are at their best, and the shearers are shearing well, shed staff are working, working well as well. Most importantly, ask your contractor for an indication of how many sheep they think the shearers will shear in a day. Have adequate sheep in the yard the afternoon prior if possible for the following day. This is a very important topic to talk about as there is very mixed discussions about this topic. Personally, I've had discussions with my growers and for the safety of my shearers and my shed staff, I ask for full day shearing to be off food and water overnight. This in turn keeps my staff, also myself, <laughs> and uh, as I'm less worried uh, about accidents that can lead to a work cover claim. It has been agreed on between Wool Producers Australia and the Shearing Contract Contractors Association that there is an 8-hour rule which basically you may as well say it's overnight 
obviously in different circumstances, for example, extreme drought, you know, droughty ewes with lambs on them, discussions about this will vary. And it's always good to communicate with your contractor about this because it is a touching issue, but the more communication you can have, the better. Thank you for watching this short clip. For more information, please visit www.leadingsheep.com.au.